search is stored on the previous page is solved by back. <coughs> Divisible by three, that would have been great. Think maybe Tyler, did you not think about the fact you gotta divide everything by three? Yeah, I didn't think about that. Okay. So I'm go back to here. Yeah, the reason I said that was that uh, on the answer key it, it, it's a, a fraction. Okay. And so I kind of thought that, well, it's not that you couldn't do it. I mean, it's legitimate approach. It's just a little hard if we're going to factor it and we're going to try and find two numbers that multiply to make negative 14 thirds and then add to make negative 1 third. Maybe you oh, have gotcha. kind of a challenge. Yeah. So maybe not. Turn them into decimal down. Yeah. Would that help? Probably. Turn this into decimal form, is that what you're saying? Yeah. This would be negative uh, 4.6666 forever. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that might. Negative six and positive seven. Adds to positive one, multiplies to negative forty two. Okay. What do we do that negative six and that seven? Plug them in for the x's. I think you mean you get the one x and replace it with negative six x plus seven x. Because if you add those together, you get x. Okay. I 
get if it did? One what? One X. So wouldn't we just get that again? Yeah. Well, why we do one like we're just gonna go back to that, right? So there must, there must be something. Something to this separation. Take two of them. Two, two, two. You find what they have in common. What do these two have in common? Three. Three and X. Three and X. How about a negative? We do a, if we pull a negative out, we undistribute a negative, we factor out a negative, then the first term inside the parentheses would have to be positive. So the negative times the positive gives you the negative. It's nice inside the parentheses to start with a positive. Right. So if we undistribute that negative 3x, or we factor out that negative 3x, what do we have inside? 1x. One 2x. One two x. Plus 2x. Plus 2x. Two. Two. Just 2, because we've got two. the x from there, OK? What do these two have in common? Seven. There you go, plus seven. X plus, X plus two as well. And now these both have a factor of X plus two. So we are factoring out that factor of X plus two or undistributing it. So if we were to take this, and distribute it to negative three x, we get negative three x times x plus two. There's that. If we distribute this uh, this x plus two to seven, we get seven times x plus two. There it is, right there. We just undistributed it, just like we undistributed the negative three x, just like we undistributed the seven. This is equal to zero. Say to do what the directions say what? Uh, the factor. This yeah, factor? Solve for us. This is solve. Oh. What does it mean to solve? What is a solution? Find x. Okay, find x. A solution is a value, is a number that how do I know it's a solution? Plug it back into the original. So uh, let's call well, this would have to be the original, but this is the same thing. Uh, so once we get the solutions, x equals whatever, we should be able to plug it in and get zero. All right, so we've got to solve for x. We've got to find out what x is actually equal to. How do we do that? From this point? That's that full term. So um, x plus 2 is equal to 0. Why does it have to be one of those two? Um, because one of those two that you multiply together has to equal zero. Because what? Why does it have to be that? One of those has to be zero. Why, Why does it equal to zero? Because you multiply them together and it's equal to zero. Yeah. So we multiply two things, this thing and this thing, to get zero. The only way to multiply and get zero is to have multiply by zero. So there we go. So we uh, subtract 2 on both sides, x is negative 2. We subtract 7 on both sides. We divide by negative 3 on both sides. 7 thirds of negative 2. If you'd like to keep the x squared term positive, you could have subtracted x and subtracted 14 on both sides. The exact same. Solutions that way. Just did it the way I suggested. Most important thing there, if you're going to factor, it's got to be equal to zero. You have to get it so that it's equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, once you get all done factoring, it won't matter. Because the whole idea was to get it factored and equal to zero so that we can do what Connor said. It's two things that won't find equal to zero. One of them had to be zero. So we set them equal to zero. That's the Which is hard if you're still stuck in the mentality of uh, get the x's on one side, get the numbers on the other side, and then somehow get x by itself. This is a different kind of an idea. Next question. 30.
want you to, if I were to send you out to the world with, uh, with limited knowledge, one of the key things I would have you remember is that this, the functions, they take things in and they put things out. They have input, they have output. And if somebody were to ask you to graph it, to graph this thing, you could just plug in a number for x and figure out the number that would come out for y, and there's a point. The input is on the x-axis and the output is on the y-axis or in the, in the y direction. So you can do that, and, and eventually you will figure out what this graph needs to look like because it'll graph so many points that you'll see this curve take shape. But to save ourselves time, we've learned about parabolas that there are some key places on the parabola. If we can find them, we can graph a pretty good graph uh, more easily. Okay. So what are some special points on a parabola? The vertex is one of them, very important one. Any other ones that sometimes show up? X's? X-intercepts, so just a little bit more than X's, X-intercepts. Um, not guaranteed to have X-intercepts, but sometimes those come up, so those are helpful. Um, so we get the vertex, the vertex gives us the axis of symmetry, and we can reflect points uh, across. So if we can get the vertex and some more points, then uh, we'll get a good picture of what the parabola looks like. So here we are. This equation is given to us. Uh, we worked with several forms of quadratic equations, standard, vertex, uh, intercept form. What do we do in this case? How do, how do we use this to find, is it x-intercept, we find the vertex? Let's find the axis of symmetry. Well, how do we manipulate this form to find some useful part of the parabola? On the vertex first, how so? What? How, how do we go about finding the vertex? Okay, so we start with that. Finding the vertex, how are we going to find the vertex? Some formula. Some formula. Like that. Is that ringing any bells for anybody else? Let's get close. Not quite there. Add on to what Brandon said. What's that? It's almost. We're just a little bit off. It's not B over 2A. Negative B. Negative B over 2A. Negative B over 2A. Alright. If you came to class without knowing that, or had this inkling of that, There it is. The x part of the vertex is negative b over 2a, so let's find that. What's b in this case? 2. Negative 2. Negative 2 is very important. Negative, negative 2. Negative b, b is negative 2. And 2 times a, what's a? x. 1. 1. The, the, the coefficient of x squared, that's a. Coefficient of x, that's b. The constant is c. It's always that way. No matter what order they're written in. A is with x squared, B is with x, and C is by itself a constant. Right, so we get uh, 2 over 2, 1. 1 is the x. How do we find the y? Plug, plug x value into the equation. If ever you want to find the y value, you just plug the x value in. If you have the x value, you're just a few steps away from the y value by plugging it in. So we got 1 minus 2. 2 times 1 is. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, minus 4 is negative 5. So the vertex is at 1, negative 5. There's 1, negative 5. So, like I said, you could plug in bunches of different guesses for x, just random numbers for x, and find all the y values that, are, that go with that. And eventually, you could probably find the vertex. But now we're certain that the one point that we've just plotted was the vertex. 
that's really useful because right through the vertex goes what? The axis of symmetry or the line of symmetry. What's the equation just as a as a piece of information? What's the equation for that line? In this case. That if you have a number on that line, mm -hmm. it'll equal if you have a number that's on that line, we'll you can plug it into the uh, X and I'll come out. Um, the the only no. the the only point that's on this line that's also on the vert or on the uh, parabola is this guy right here. All these other points are not on the parabola. They're just on that line. Is it x is equal to one? X is equal to one. The the only reason we drew that line is because. At that x value, we see the line of symmetry. The only thing that's true about this line uh, at all points is that x is equal to 2. y is all over the place. It could be equal to anything, but no matter what y is on that line, x is always 2. So that is the line x equals 2. So you got the vertex. That's great. What else do we need in order to drive a reasonable picture of this parabola? Which do we need to know which direction it faces? Um, yeah. Does it face up or does it face down? Up. How do we know that? Because the x got a positive in front of the x squared. So we know it opens up, but you know how much? Is it really flat? Which I think is what you're saying is the slope. If you think about it. Lines have slopes, and this isn't a line, this is a curve, so actually the slope would be Can we get an idea of that, of how steep it is, and how, uh, you know, which direction it opens up? By the negatives? Hmm? By the negatives? By the negatives? What do you mean by the negatives? Whether it goes up or down. Okay, so I maybe asked the question we already answered. We already, <coughs> already answered that the, the coefficient of x squared is positive, so it opens up. I said this is a parabola, there's the vertex, and I said draw it. What other piece of information would you like to have? Do you think draw is even in which points or uh, yeah, points that it goes through, the line goes through? Some other points. So how do we find those other points? Um it's the line intercept. There's another point, so y intercept's a nice point. How do we find that y intercept? Um it's basically negative four. It is negative four. Uh so how do we find that negative four? Which number would you plug in? If you want to know the y value along the, the y axis. X is zero. X is zero. So if x is zero, zero minus zero minus four is negative four. And then we can reflect that over the <coughs> axis of symmetry. And we can draw a reasonable graph. to be over 2a, whatever that turns out to be, you plug it back into the equation, that gives you the y value, there's your vertex, very good. Once you have your vertex, all you would need is just another point, and you can just take that one point, you can reflect it over the axis of symmetry, since you know where that is, given the vertex, you just need another point. You could pick 0 as x, you could pick 1, well, 1 wouldn't be a good choice here, because 1 is already on the vertex, 2, negative 1, 7, whatever you want to pick. So next question. 52. 52. Thank <laughs> you. 
So even, let's say, like the day after an algebra one student learns distribution, combining like terms, they can do most of this. Just multiply things together like normal, as if I were just some variable, um, combine like terms, all that kind of stuff. <coughs> At the very end, an algebra two student uh, might be able to simplify this a little more. So here we have negative i. Uh, you see here we have the number seven minus five i. Is there really any point to these parentheses? Why not? That's a positive one in front of there, so you need to distribute this positive one into the parentheses, which will just give you a plus seven and a minus five i. We have minus three, so what do we need to do here? Distribute your negative three minus six plus nine i. Like like terms. Click the constants. You got seven minus six is four. <coughs> Nine i minus five i. That's four i minus another i. That's three i. And that's it. <coughs> what what is i? <coughs> Imaginary number. And so it, square root of negative one, right? I just stands in the place of the square root of negative one. It actually is a value, but to save ourselves time, we call it I. So that, that's the best we can do. That's as simple as it can get. But if we had I squared, what's I squared equal to? Negative one. Okay. So if we had, just for instance, if we wound up with a four I squared, and then at the end of this problem, and we need to further simplify. And algebra one student would just think, well, that's just i squared. Nothing you can do with that. But we know that i squared is equal to negative one, so what is this equal to? Negative one. Negative, negative four. Four times negative one, negative four. That's just, that, has, uh, that doesn't directly apply to this problem because we just happen to wind up with I to the first, and that's it. No I squared, no I to the third, nothing else. 39. 39. When it says write as a product of two factors, you could just say equivalently factor this quadratic. Look at the I said factor the number 12. What would you give me? 4 over 3? 4 times 3. Two factor. How do we know it's factored? That's a factorization. Right? How do we know it's factored? Just one times 3 is 12. Now 4 plus 3, is, or, or any other operation, is when you multiply these two things together to get the original. That's why when we factor a quadratic, the result is something times something. Factor 12, you get 4 times 3, something times something. You factor anything, you need to get something times something. So that's what right as the product of two factors means. Factor this quadratic. After we begin to approach this factoring problem.
factor out a 3h from these two, and just like we factored out a negative 4 from these two, there's two terms here. Both of them have a factor of 4h minus 5, so we factor out 4h minus 5. 3h minus 4. If we were to distribute this parentheses here, we could distribute the whole thing right to there. 3h times 4h minus 5, there it is. 3h minus 5 times negative 4. 4 times 4h minus 5. And then find the zeros. Uh, let's say, should we solve it? Can we solve this? Can it be solved? This. Yeah. How can it be solved? It's not a, yeah, it's not equal to anything. It's got to be an equation. You can only solve equations. You can't solve general expressions. Just an expression. This is practice for solving equations by factoring, but it's just factoring. There's no way to solve something that's not an equation to start with. If you say this is equal to zero, you're making an assumption. They did not give you an idea. They didn't say it was equal to zero. Just assume. So we're done. It's factored. It is the product of two factors. Right? Next question. 74. So, so formula can similar to the quadratic formula is? That's the general form, of the, the standard form of a quadratic equation. What's the quadratic form? Negative b plus times square root of b squared um, minus 4 times a plus c over 2k. Right. If you've forgotten it, you can see it's right over there. Negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Um, so these A's and B's and C's refer to the A's, B's and C's that you find in the original quadratic equation. Okay. Now this wasn't the quadratic formula, but it's very significant that someone mentioned AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. What's very important about this? This is a reminder for every quadratic equation we try to solve in the quadratic formula. But they all get on the same side. Equals zero. You've got to have everything on one side, and zero on the other side, right? Yeah. How do we do that? Um, plus nine. Plus nine on both sides. Equals zero. Now we can use the quadratic formula. We just plug in a, b, and c. X equals negative. What's b? One. One right there. Be careful if if the if a, a question is trying to be tricky and say like nine plus three x squared plus x equals zero. Now what is b? It's still x, so 1. 
and still one, and still the number that you're multiplying by x. It's always, b is always the number you're multiplying by x. So there you go. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a, which is 3, three times c times 9 over 2 times a, which is again 3. Negative 1 plus or minus the square root of, that's 1, minus 4 times This is 108? Yeah. So 1 minus 108, negative 107, over 6. How do I write the square root of negative 107? Yeah? Uh, yeah, anytime you have the square root of a negative, always just start off with i times the square root of positive. Now we can uh, approach this 107. I don't even know if 107 can You can check the first few factors pretty easily. It's divisible by 2. No. Now, which means it's not divisible by 4 or 6 or 8 or any other even number. Right? So those are out. So 3, how do you check to see if it's divisible by 3? Numbers, the, 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 the digits here. Yeah. Seven plus one is eight. That's not. Not divisible by three. If the sum of the digits is divisible by three, then the number is not divisible by three. So not two, not three, uh, not four, five. No. Doesn't end in five and zero. Six. No. Seven. Maybe, but that would mean that a hundred is divisible by seven or eight. So that's you can pretty quickly figure out that's not. Uh, eight. No. 9, no, because it's not divisible by 3. 10, no. 11. No. No. How far do we have to go? How, how big of a number do we have to check and see if it's divisible by that number? I want to know if 107 is divisible by something. I try 2, 3, 4, 5. How do I have, how far, how high do I have to go? How big a number do I have to go to? Before I can say, it's just, there's nothing I can do. Did I get twist? So you get to the sum that's all numbers? Like so you get to eight? Yeah. Uh, you get. Five. Well, we can go to 11, we can go 12, 13, 14, 15. We can try all of these numbers. But at some point, we're going to kind of, like there's these smaller numbers that are factors, maybe. And then there's the ones that they would get paired up with, or bigger numbers. Like if it was divisible by two, it would be two times some larger number would be 107. So we don't, if we know it's not divisible by 2, we don't want to go all the way up to the number you have to multiply by 2 to get 107. You see what I'm saying? So where do you stop? You stop at 11, 12, 13, 14? What's the, what's the general guideline for this? 10. Huh? 10. Just 10? Yeah. Because the number is, yeah, be, yeah well, actually 11. Because, uh, but uh, in you know, general, always go to 11? Normal because, uh, because if you do, you just gotta yeah, like. Well, what if the number is like uh, the the smallest factor that it has is like twenty three, which is the prime number. Yeah. Right. So a really big number that's that's the smallest factor is twenty three. If you stop at eleven, you wouldn't have ever found that out. Yeah. So how do you know when? Like, okay, I've checked enough factors. There's there's nothing. This is the. I don't know. Huh? Any guesses? What? Guideline maybe? Well, when like you multiply it by a smaller number, take it to seven. Like, like well, when it, the numbers start to. To pair up, yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Where at? What? Where is that dividing line? Where do I? Okay, this would be one of the smaller numbers, and if I cross this line, I'm going to be going into the bigger numbers. Where is that? To the number. Yeah, if you had, um, uh, like,
look at the number 221. You want to know, is it prime or is it not? Is it factorable or is it not a factor? Start with 2. No, it's not even, so it's not divisible by 2 or anything else. Is it divisible by 3? Yeah. If I add these up, I get 5. One is five. That's not divisible by three. So oh, two okay. times one is not divisible by three. Not four. Not five. Not six. Seven. Maybe. Then you only at that time do you really need to pull out your calculator. Two twenty. Two twenty one divided by seven. No. How high do you go? How big a number do you go up to and test to see if it's a factor of two twenty one before you're pretty sure you're done? This one does have a factor. This one is prime. How high do you got it? Okay, 13. About 223. <coughs> Is it prime or not? I don't know. Brandon, you're trying to divide it by. Seven and maybe eleven, right? Trying to divide it by six stuff. When are you going to stop guessing as to what could possibly go into it? I'm not going to just add. <laughs> okay. Well, never mind. We won't discuss it. You can go as far as you want to. 107 turns out to be prime, so it's as simplified as possible. Okay. But what are you? But I, I want to know. Going. Yeah. Where are we yeah. going with that? You're just sitting there waiting for me to spoon feed you the answer. You're not engaged whatsoever. It's not something you have to know. So either get engaged or don't have it. Make some guesses at the very least. It's 11. Yeah, I know that. What's 11? It's 11. What is 11? <laughs> no. But so you, 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 you go to 11. Why not higher than 11? You don't need to. Why not? It's after that it starts to be itself. No. Right. Why is that? <laughs> I mean, the bigger the number is. Okay, so you're right. Well, why are you right? So what, how about a number like 223? How high do you have to go with 223? Is it 11? Well, there's like, you, you have 2 and you have 3. And then you test 7 and then 11. And so you really only have 4 numbers you have to test. Which is right. Nice little, okay. But what about 13? Is what, 13 going to 223? Should you go that high? 15. You shouldn't go to, like... It, it would probably be a waste of time to go all the way to uh, 115, right? That would definitely be, you, you definitely tried too hard if you go all the way to 115. Got it? It's when you, uh, you, you take a number and when you divide it, uh, the number that you get is lower than the number you divided by. So like two twenty three, and you divide. Okay. You divide by fifteen, and then fifteen uh -huh. trying to get then a number that multiplies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if the number is below the number that you divided it by already, you know that you can stop because you know that it's not gonna, there's not gonna be a number, and that you're gonna be able to uh, multiply it against. Yeah, great. If you if you take two twenty three, you start dividing it by, uh, well, you two three. So you said go to seven, eleven, right? If I divide it by eleven and I get that whatever that's going to be a decimal, right? Whatever that number is, it's going to be bigger than 11, right? Mm -hmm. And that, like, if I bring my hands together, if I go 11, it's going to be, give me a number that's bigger than 11. Mm -hmm. And then maybe if I go to 13, um, I give you a number that's bigger than 13. But at some point, you're going to like cross that line, and then you're going to start just dividing by those bigger numbers. And the result will be the smaller numbers, which you already went past. You already tried those. So, great observation. Where is that line? Where do you cross that point where you start dividing by numbers and getting numbers that are smaller? Well, there isn't one line. It's different for all numbers. Right, so there's not one number like 11 or 13. It's a half. It's a half, so that's a really common. Uh, quarter? Right? Is it half? Is it a quarter? Now we're starting some guesses. Okay. Let's try um, 64. Now you know some of the factors of 64. But how? How do you have to go before you start repeating yourself? Before you start getting 
the smaller factor. A quarter of 64? What is a quarter of 64? 16? What about? Uh, oh, okay, what about? Uh, so, is it visible by 12? Well, half of 16 would be 32. Yeah. So she, you, you already had Caroline 16, where you observed this happening. It, uh, to, in that line is your square root of the number. The square root of the number. How did you get there? Because, because uh, uh, like you then once you take your number, like then uh, if it's a uh, if it's a number, then uh, like you can take it like it's number down uh, number times the number uh, like eight eight times eight to get 64. Uh, well. The square root is eight, so that means. So that's the point where the factors are the same. Mm -hmm. So when I divide by eight, I get eight. I get the same number. I don't get a number that's bigger or smaller. So by your like your pattern that you recognized, mm -hmm. if we take sixty-four, one yes, two yes, three no, four, uh, six no, eight. Uh, okay, now when we get to eight, then this next number here is just going to be the number that you multiply by four. Four times what? Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. And after that, 32, and then finally 64. 1 times 64. So the square root is that line. So that half, not quarter, the square root. Is that only with numbers so that have the square root? Of well, no, like 107. What's the square root of 107? About. Just guess from your heads. What's the, what's the perfect square that's really close to 107? 100. What's the square root of 100? 10. 10. And then. What's the next perfect square after 100? 11. 11 squared, 121. So 107, the square root of 107 is somewhere bigger than 10. So now we know that because 11 is just past the square root, we can stop. And 107 is prime. Okay? So since 107 is prime, you cannot factor 107 and simplify it by writing it as like the square root of, say, 4, or the square root of something, or the square root of 9. Okay. What's the next question? How many questions on this test? Yeah. Sixteen? Sixteen. How many pages are there? Yes. Two back to back and then one more. Right. I want to have time to do my test, so. Let's just take it. We already do six. No. Do six and eight. Uh, no. Give me the last one. Uh, X squared plus five X plus one zero. This already looks like it's supposed to equal to zero. That's important before you use the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 2ac over 2a. x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared. 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 as a, c, both 1 over 2 times a, which is 1. Negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 4 is 21 uh, over 2. Uh, 21 is 7 times 3. Why, why does that not really help? Neither one of those is a perfect square. We could write it as the square root of 7 times the square root of 3, but neither one of those simplifies. So we just leave it. Negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 21 over 2. That negative could go a little better. everything away. That line. Very well done, Tyler. Thank you, Tyler.